Well, after the closure of the Maple Leaf Foods building in 2011, the city of North Battleford is looking at ways to attract new business. One of those ways is to make it easier for medical marijuana producers to develop in the community. Our interest is in economic development and zoning. So if the federal government is going to make the production of this substance legal, we want to ensure that if it happens in our municipality, it happens in the most appropriate place, which is why we're discussing it in our heavy industrial uh, area. A bylaw to rezone the Parsons Industrial Park passed first reading last month, allowing medical marijuana producers to establish a business in the park pending the city's approval. But despite some misconceptions, the mayor says there has been no interest so far from marijuana companies. There's not been nothing specific uh, given to, uh, to council in terms of an actual proponent of a project. None of the property owners in the industrial park that we are aware of uh, have indicated a desire. But uh, this is an opportunity for council just to amend the zoning bylaw to allow it in the future if there was a developer interested in such a project. Second reading of the zoning bylaw will be back in front of North Battleford City Council in two weeks. A lack of local bids for City of Lloydminster projects has raised the question about how accessible the city's public tenders really are. Now administration has been tasked with leveling the playing field. Adam McVicker has more. When it comes to city projects, from snow clearing to engineering for major builds, public tenders or request for proposals are released, giving companies the chance to bid on the job. But when City Council debated who to hire for a computer and software refresher, Councillor Aaron Buckingham noticed there were no local bids. When I see a, uh, one of these RFPs come out, there's 11 on it and there's not one local business on there, my immediate question was, did they know? Buckingham bringing to light concern the communication going out from the city isn't as clear and easy to access as it could be. I just had, you know, happened to have a couple of local businesses say, hey, where do I find the information for these uh, RFPs that come out? Administration is now taking a look at the issue. If it's a small company, an individual owner, or just a couple of employees, we'd like to see what we can do with administration to get information out because that's always a challenge. Council suggesting an easy to access section for tenders on the revamped city website, which is already in the works. In the end, if I as a local business owner know that I can go to that site and see all existing RFPs that are there, then it's my responsibility to either jump on that or let it slide. Now the city is making it clear that making those public tenders easier to find doesn't mean they're going to favor local business in the process. They examine each bid on a specific set of criteria. Anyone can sell on price, but if the service and the quality isn't there, you, you could end up with something that you really didn't want. The tendering process itself is expected to be back in front of council in the next couple of months. If a local supplier can provide something to the city, we want to ensure it's, that they have that opportunity. Adam McVicker, New Cap News. Dr. Eva Olson is sharing her message about the dangers of hate and bullies with Lloyd Minster. The 92-year-old Holocaust survivor spoke to a packed gymnasium at St. Thomas School today. Brian Lentz has the story. If hate is left unchecked, it becomes rage. And that's what you could see in Hitler's face. For 21 years, Dr. Olson has been sharing her story in communities across Canada, telling adults and kids alike the importance of love. People that carry love in their heart will never hate another human being, whether they're white or black or Asian or Muslim. It doesn't matter. She says her strength to carry on through her hardships came from within. I've learned to walk through the mountain one step at a time, in spite of all the obstacles, because I believed in myself and I knew when I walked through it, I will see the light. Dr. Olson's story of inner strength and the need to eliminate bullies is one organizers say students need to hear. In our society, there's many forms of bullying going on. We just feel this is another great opportunity for her to share uh, that message so that uh, all the young students in our schools can uh, make better choices and treat each other with more respect. Students say they appreciate the chance to hear a first-hand account about the Holocaust and they are taking the message to heart. It's a good opportunity to learn all about it. And I know it's going to be the truth because she's survived it and she's been in it. Spread the word to stop this from ever happening again, to make sure we all treat each other equally and just to lo love one another. Dr. Olson says the energy to continue sharing her experience for decades comes from her audience. Somebody has to do it. This is the last generation. 
that will ever be part of this type of assembly. And uh, who's going to tell the next one? Brian Lentz, New Cap News. A girl from North Battleford is celebrating after winning second place in a nationwide writing contest. Angie Mellon tells us more about the 11-year-old and what inspired her entry. Home is a place to keep me safe. A home is a shelter, a place where we can be together. At home we are safe forever, cherishing all the memories we've made together. That's part of what home means to Jasmine Bouchard. She wrote the poem as an entry to Genworth Canada's 10th annual Meaning of Home contest. I was just like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then I was like, well, there's so many other people entering, I'm probably not going to win, but whatever. However, out of 10,000 entries, she did win. I was like shocked. I was like sitting there just plain amazed. Her mom and teacher were unexpecting of the win as well. My mom was like, I'm trying not to cry. And then my teacher said the same thing. She was like, I almost cried over the phone. Because of her win, a $5,000 grant will be donated to Habitat for Humanity Saskatoon. This donation allows us to continue um, our active builds. Um, we're currently building in Saskatoon and North Battleford. Um, we rely on the support, uh, the financial support of our community partners to be able to build um, the houses for our low-income families. Like the sun, its joyful loving rays make me never want to go away. My home is filled with love and care, something every family has to share. The love we have is far beyond compare. Jasmine also has one more thing to look forward to, the other part of the prize, a pizza party with her class. Angie Mellon, New Cap News. Well, everyone has their own traditional recipes that they think grandma makes best. Well, bannock making has been a family staple in many Aboriginal households. And today the community had the chance to taste and learn about the dish. Chantal Germo with more. The last event of Aboriginal Awareness Week was tasting a variety of different bannock recipes. There were traditional, vegan and unique options for people to try. Every culture has their staple and native Canadians have bannock. Um, pe other people have pita bread, like you know. So it's and it's it's ours. So now they've learned our 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 bread. Being the very first time that Lakeland College has hosted events for Aboriginal Awareness Week, they wanted to do something that was well known in Indigenous culture and where education could be included. We wanted to do something that was interactive with. Aboriginal students and non-Aboriginal students. Everyone loves Bannock, so we wanted to put it out there and maybe get some people who haven't tried Bannock to try it. Traditionally, Bannock isn't our tradition. It came after contact when the Europeans came. We didn't have flour and we didn't have sugar, and those were incorporated over the years. But like I said, once we had the recipe, we perfected it. Young students had the chance to join in to show them that the custom should continue to be passed down generation to generation in their households. People are coming to visit and you say, have something to eat, pay mitzo, have something to eat. So there's always bannock around usually and it's easy to make, it's easy and it's tasty. And it's something everybody enjoys and likes and it's familiar. So. That's how I think every family identifies with it. Chantel Germo, New Cap News. In focusing on our own health, sometimes we can forget that your pets need maintenance as well. The signs aren't always obvious, but without proper grooming, nutrition and other needs, your animal friend could require more serious help. Josh Ryan has more in this week's Healthy Living. Taking care of cats, dogs, and other pets requires multiple forms of care. Figuring out what kind of care they require, however, takes keen observation. Some weight loss or a little bit of vomiting or hair coat is very poor or we're drinking a little bit more water. Just very subtle signs and those are the earliest indicators that we may be having some issues. A common issue for dogs, particularly those with continuously growing hair, is matting, where clumps can form, bringing severe discomfort. Skin conditions like hot spots, they're called, where it is an actual open wound where you won't even know it's there until you actually shave the matting off because there's no air reaching it, there's nothing. A basic strategy to help your pet remain healthy is proper nutrition, which varies for every animal. We need to tailor make a diet for based on what their life stage is any issues they may be having, whether they're obese, whether they are thin, whether they have dental disease. Some conditions can be treated with advancements in medications and supplements, such as glucosamine for bad joints. 
genetic issues with hip dysplasia or arthritis from trauma injuries that they've had, we can now manage those cases. And that, that's a big, big change from 25 years ago. Many pet owners, though, forget the importance of socialization for animals, especially with dogs, which will lead them to be better behaved around other pets and people. Meet the right dogs first, be in a controlled situation so that your dog is comfortable. Your dog knows that you're in control of the situation, that they don't have to be as in control. And that sort of activity highlights the need for exercise, especially in Canada during those long winter months. We see weight gains immediately, and if they're not outside being happy and getting that exercise, it's a little bit harder on their joints, their hair coats are not as good, that's a pet that isn't as happy. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. As we look forward to spring, livestock owners are being reminded to take precautions against an old enemy that comes with the warmer temperatures. In this week's agriculture report, Gerard Lampau finds out what cattle producers need to do ahead of getting the herd back on the grass. They pick up the worms as they graze on grass. Warmer temperatures gets everyone excited for spring, including cattle. But Dr. Trent Winnekamp with the Lloydminster Animal Hospital is reminding producers about deworming the herd before returning to pasture. One thing we like to do is eliminate them uh, when they get on pasture um, and to uh, either make sure they're deworm before they go on pasture or as they're on pasture. There's different products that you can use in different situations. <coughs> Those worms can have mostly, you know, not serious effects, more sort of effects in just how well they grow and how well they, they do and perform. Producers need to deworm both in the fall when cattle go back on feed and in the spring before returning to grass. If they're really serious, they can, um, you know, cause them to actually, you know, get really sick or even die from it, although that is fairly rare. Our climate of, you know, minus 30 temperatures actually <laughs> helps get rid of worms. Dr. Winnekamp says the symptoms can be subtle. Sometimes it can be more serious. There's uh, lung worms and obviously they can get pneumonias and sickness from that. Intestinal worms where they can get so, um, you know, doing so poorly that they lose a lot of weight. Dr. Winnekamp says many of the deworming products will also eliminate other parasites like lice. He recommends producers bring in fecal samples as they will have to check microscopically for eggs to determine how serious the infection is. Over time, many parasites are building up resistance to treatments, but he notes one product is enduring. The dewormers that we use externally, you know, their ability to kill parasites has been dropping over the years. You know, they're not as they're not at kind of the 100% they used to be. Now they're more at, you know, 60, 70, 80%. And thankfully, uh, Safeguard is, is still working quite well and will kill almost all the parasites. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Well, hometown hockey may be gone, but the memories of the event will live on for a lifetime. One of the more enjoyable events was the Maple Leafs alumni game and the chance for some local hockey players to get up close and personal with Maple Leaf legends. Here's Lance Phillips with a unique look at a game where the score didn't matter. All right, I'm here with Coach Darcy Tucker. That's a, you don't hear that very often, Coach. <laughs> Not very often, but uh, it's a lot of fun. The boys are having a good time out there. You're tied 6-6 with a minute left in the second. Is that where you expected to be with this group? No, our D stink. Our D are giving the puck away all over the place. The guys are throwing their sticks. The guys got breakaways. I don't know what's happening here right now. All right, Coach. Normally, we see you in this position. We're seeing you tonight out on the ice. How does it feel to be out there with these guys? That's awesome. It's such a great time just being on the ice with these legends out on the ice, you know, just being and playing with some of the local guys. And uh, You know, it's pretty amazing for sure. It's, it's great to be out here. They've been great guys. They're having a lot of fun out here. And uh, it's pretty impressive to see how well they move the puck. And, and like you said, they're legends. They're kind of old guys, but they still do pretty good out here. It's, it's impressive. <laughs> Here with Rick Vive, who spent quite a few years with the Leafs. Rick, what's it like to be out here in this in this small community of Lloydminster doing this with these fans? Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, you know, we enjoy doing these types of things, and of course, when you're doing it for, for a good cause and you're playing against some of the local guys, and uh, it, it's always a lot of fun. We really enjoy it. Here with Dan Dowd. Dan, I feel like the competitiveness is really heated up here in the last few minutes. 
Oh yeah, you know, you, you always get it. Uh, we go inside the dressing room, have a little chit chat with the boys, and uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, the juices are going to come out both sides. And, uh, we don't want to lose. We lost the other night, so we don't want to lose tonight. Yeah, you always want to win. I, you know, that's how I always played. I don't like getting scored on. I like scoring goals, so always, always want to win. We're, we're down by one goal. We got a lot of work to do here yet. Well, that's what I. That's what I wanted to ask you next. Was you had it tied up. It was getting close, but now they pulled ahead. Oh, you tied it up again. Is this where you expected to be? That's Bob Clad Hockey. Just keep crawling back. Hope we get a W that tonight. Enjoy it, coach. Thanks for having me. You have a big day tomorrow. You and Kobe. You're going to go on with Ron and Tara. How excited are you to do that? It's going to be pretty cool. I think you know you grow up seeing seeing them on the panel and everything, and and always watching what's going on. So it's going to be pretty cool to be a part of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, once in a lifetime thing to do, just like just like this game, and just happy to be here, happy to do it. There are so many great aspects of this game that fans could take away with them, but the most compelling is happening right here, right now, and it's young kids getting autographs from players who haven't been in uniform for nearly 30 years, proving that the biggest takeaway is that hockey is timeless. Lance Phillips, Newcap Sports, Lloydminster.